This is a mug of tea. This is homemade Rocky Road. And this is the Primaris Apothecary. And this is the Hobby Corner. And I am doing this in my painting guide as part of the Warhammer 40,000 Conquest series. So, stay tuned. That was hotter than I thought it'd be. So, what are you going to need with your apothecary and painting it? So, I've got two lots of water. I've got a small one and a larger one. Uh, the reason being is because red is a very strong pigmented colour. So, I want to have a separate source of water for rinsing the brushes to make sure that I keep them good clean because that red really does stick to those brushes. Um, I'm not too worried about blue because it's a lot more subtle and um, it's always good to have fresh paint when you're painting anyway especially if you have any metallics involved I want to show you the difference between painting celestial grey straight on and painting celestial grey onto a white a corex white sprayed base so that way you lot get to see uh, you know what difference it can make finally I clipped a piece of sprue out and super glued it onto the back of that power pack that way I've got full freedom to paint around and not worry about getting my fingers on there leaving fingerprints and then of course from the build video so the link will be up there um, I clipped all the bits and pieces that I wanted uh, to paint separately and kept them on the sprues so it's a lot easier to paint next time right I'm getting down to the paints so we'll be starting off with uh, celestial grey and uh, you know you want to do two thin coats on that just to make sure you get a nice even consistency without blotting out any details we will then start painting in the robes and details like the uh, apothecarium sign and some screens and bits and bobs with Mephiston red and then we will move on to the metallic areas with lead belcher we will then do the shoulder and the dead space marine underfoot with McCrag blue once that all done we then start filling in some more details with Abaddon Black and then doing some trims and icons and such with Retributor Armour. Then we will go into more specific details. So Purity Seals with the Mephiston Red and Rakar Flesh. Bugman's Glow for the skin if you are doing the bare head. Um, Retributor Armour on some of the details on the base. Mechanica Standard Grey to paint the base and Lead Belcher for some of the battle damage on the Fallen Primaris Space Marine. Once we've got all the base coats done and the details filled out, we will then move on to shading. So Agrox Earthshade is going to be used for the bone, parchment and gold areas. Non Oil will be used for the metallic areas that were painted in Lead Belcher. And then Reichland Flesh Shade will be used on any fleshy bits that you have. Finally we'll base it with Astro Granite. It's worth noting that in the magazine they also have a page on fixing mistakes um, which I usually do uh, just to pretty the models up for the pictures and stuff so again I always suggest that you leave this to the end because that way you don't keep fixing the same mistakes over and over. Right. So, we're going to want to start with the Lester Grey. Don't want it too thin, otherwise it's just going to run off the plastic. So, that sort of consistency is good. So basically, just uh, start painting away. I do suggest using a brush like the large base brush, just to save time. Um, but it's also small enough to get in the nooks and crannies. And then of course you will need to do two layers so that's basically one layer so as you can see it's not too bad 
but if I was to speed things along, I'd spray it white, Corex white, and then I'll do Celestial Grey. You're probably thinking, why would you do Celestial Grey over white if an apothecary is white already? Well, in order to paint white, you don't paint white. You actually leave the white as a highlight and you paint slightly darker shades of white so very slightly tinted greys um, or you can do like slightly coloured greys just that slight off-white colour but it makes all the difference should have something like this and this was after two good coats and then one quick thin one over that just to make sure and um, as comparison so I only needed to do one coat with this um, but if you put them together I'm not sure if it really shows on this camera you can see that the one with the white undercoat is just a little bit brighter than this one so the celestial gray is just a little bit bluer because of the blue plastic showing through um, but that's good gives it a nice cool effect so that when we build our layers on and we do the shading and everything by the end of it you're gonna have this nice natural white with all these white highlights on it as well next bit is Mephiston red now with this one we will be doing all the major details now do try and be careful not to get this on any of the white areas that you want to keep white because red is very difficult to paint white over um, and it's very easy to make a mess of it so make sure you got a nice point not too much paint on the brush and you hold it steady with your hands like this and we're going to be painting our robes so that's the top and the bottom part as well we are also going to be painting very carefully so if you see these cross ribbon symbols all of them are going to be painted in red So once you've finished painting red, something a little bit like this. So I haven't painted the back part of that because it's going to be painted in Rakhar flesh later anyway. And uh, the jean seed is painted red uh, instead of the Buckman glow, um, as per the instructions in the book. I believe that's just to give it a bloody look. But you can always go for bug and glow if you wish and then do the uh, flesh shade afterwards uh, so you've got all your bits and pieces here next up lead belt jar so for this you will be focusing more on the uh, macadendrites so kill those raised blades you've got the uh, drill bits as well and uh, you want to sort of leave the clean panels white and go for the more machine areas so like this this would probably be like the motor unit pin up you've got these cable as well
All right, so once you've finished with the lead pelcher, we'll move on to the crack blue. You want to paint in this shoulder guard, and only this one, because you want to keep the other one plain white. And you can just run the tip of the brush sideways like this, along the edge, so that you don't go over the bump. So you're kind of using the bump, uh, the rim, sorry, as like, training wheels to stop your brush from rolling over okay next up is uh abdon black so what you want to do is paint all the pouches the reductor or if you want to do the pistol you can um all of the straps as well all the way over the back including ones across the chest as well any cables that you see and these dials, not forgetting the bits in between the armor as well. The power back, you know, you've got these cables, do them, do the little pipe, do the neck of the heads, bit in between the armor, the neck, and the arm as well. The rage is a old, so just put some on the palette and get just the right amount on the nice point and we'll be painting all of the uh, details all right you also want to paint this bit with the wings as well and the shin here the greave I believe it's called you need to paint these up as well Canoptic jars, yes, I remembered what they're called. The details on the Fallen Space Marine as well. Once you've painted in all those gold details, we then move on to our finer details.
Alright, so once you're finished with that, the next stage in the magazine is to do the shading and to paint the base and then it goes on to touch-ups, so correcting any mistakes that you've made. Now, my experience, um, I like to do the touch-ups first and then do the shades because as long as you're careful with the shades, there's no need to do any further touch-ups and it also means that you're not shading over other mistakes as well. So for example, if you have um, some of the black going over into the red and you shade in the red, well then when you go to correct that mistake, you have to paint the red over the shaded red and you have to shade it again and it will be noticeable. So the best way to avoid that is to correct it. So paint that red in where the black overlapped, then do the shading. As long as you're careful with your shading, it shouldn't be an issue at all. Let's get to it. So first of all, we will be doing Egrex Earth Shade and we'll be going for all the parchment bones and the uh, scroll work and the parchment on the earth at the moment, all the gold details as well. That includes the bases as well. Then we will move on to Nuln Oil. So with this, we'll be doing all of the silver areas. So just make sure you're careful with that. And then, so Reichland Flesh Shade will be for the flesh, so if you're choosing to do bare head, you shade that in, making sure that you don't go too heavy because you don't blot out all the details, you just want to bring them out. Finally, we'll get on to Astro Granite, so what you'll need to do, if you've done what I've done, kept it on the sprue, is clip it out, just touch up the corners, um, well actually you won't even need to because Astro Granite is the same colour as uh, Mechanica Standard Grey, it's just got texture to it. So you cut this out, pop this dude off the base, which should be easy enough, glue this on and then wait for it to set and then you can pop this around the edges. So as you can see, it is a bit difficult painting the uh, Celestial Grey straight from the pot um, and it would have saved a lot of time and effort to spray white first and then do a layer of Celestial Grey overlap. Um, and you'd only need one layer because the Corex white spray is so light it would just fade behind that celestial grey and the celestial grey is quite a light colour as well if you want to do the easy way that's the way to do it I hope you found those instructions uh, helpful and uh, you learned from that video as well so let's get on to our community focus and see what you the community have done with your Primaris Apothecaries. And there you have it. So as you can see, plenty of inspiration there, some fantastic work, and it really goes to show what you can achieve with those models, whether you're following the Conquest series or whether you're doing your own thing. And that's all I've got time for. So thank you again for joining me. Please make sure you hop over to Big Mac Down Skull, where every week he gets the brand new issue, he reviews it, he expands upon it, and he really brings the most of each issue so 
go check him out, subscribe to his channel, and while you're at it, subscribe to mine, and click the little bell icon while you're at it as well, so you don't miss an episode. All my uh, links are in the description below as well, so follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And that's it. So thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> I ain't even sorry that I nicked two pieces. Oh.